Wow, we just saw some big outflows from some of the ETFs yesterday, and the price of Bitcoin is actually doing okay. We also had Tom Lee, a very famous investor, go on to live TV and talk about Bitcoin, and he was called crazy three different times for suggesting that someone might have 1% in Bitcoin. The host called him crazy three times. This has very much changed uh, over time because this was from a uh, few years ago, but now the head of Black of BlackRock Digital Investments is talking about doing the same thing, and this is the largest financial financial institution in the world. So we're gonna break down a couple of the pieces of the news here today. Talk about some more high risk, high reward cryptos towards the end of the video. Three different cryptos, if you don't mind. Hit subscribe, turn on that bell notification so you can see future videos just like this as soon as I make them. There's also going to be a link to Margex underneath the video. They've just rolled out their new platform, which allows you to convert cryptocurrencies from like USDT into Bitcoin and Bitcoin to USDT very easily. Uh, before that, you just had to keep it in that asset, but now you can convert. And they're rolling out more of these. They're going to increase the amount that you can trade, but they're just doing it slowly. So you can check out this link underneath the video. There's also a link down there to CoinW as well, where you can trade spot cryptocurrencies now and you can trade futures as well. And I realize I've talked to a couple traders recently. This has been kind of a slow week for traders, not too many people putting on trades, but I do think this is where you might wanna consider putting some trades in if, you're, if you are going on leverage because we've been sideways for so long. Like a lot of people are just getting bored. This is a month. A month since we've hit the previous all-time highs or since we've been around this price so yeah some people are getting complacent but that's usually a good reason why we eventually move up is because people get bored people turn away and then boom we make another big move I could always be wrong but it is interesting and I do want to apologize too yesterday I wasn't feeling very good felt under the weather um, but now I'm feeling much better so appreciate everyone that stuck around for some of those videos yesterday now let's take a look at this who says you can't make a splash without causing waves? My name is Grayscale and I took a $300 million dump and the market didn't even flinch. Yes, yesterday was a big outflow day. We actually saw, I think it was right around 200 million flowing out from the ETFs combined. And Bitcoin's still over $70,000. I mean, that's kind of crazy when you think like one of the most bullish catalysts over the last probably two, three years, maybe ever, were these ETFs and they have bought a lot of Bitcoin. FBTC and iBit are some of the most successful ETFs ever. Actually, each one of these providers of the ETFs, they've said that these are their best ETFs ever. And yet, even on days where we see large outflows, it's not like we see a massive dump. It's not like everyone loses faith. Not that kind of happens. Remember, we've had times where people felt like that narrative was gone and then it came back and then it was gone again and then it came back. If you actually look at the price of Bitcoin, it correlates pretty closely to the ETFs. But yesterday we had a large outflow day and we're still sitting above $70,000. And this would be quite bullish too if we use this, this triangle as support and then just rally back up. That could be a very technically bullish pattern. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen, but it is interesting to watch. And part of the reason I think we don't see these big dumps necessarily from a day of ETF selling is we are seeing a lot of other entities buy. And I covered that in the video yesterday, how many different companies are buying and adding this as their treasury asset. Now, I think there has been a massive change as well from institutions. Take a look at this. Let me play this for you. This was when Bitcoin was right around $5,000. This is Tom Lee going on, I believe this is CNBC. Let's take a look. Do you actually think it's undervalued by that extent? Well, you know, we've kind of, we think the best approach for most people is just to put 1% or 2%. Are you saying that? I get that if you're somebody who's got a lot of assets. I, I still think it's crazy. But for a retail investor, somebody who's saving for retirement and putting that aside, that seems crazy to me. Well, it's basically the idea that, you know, you can afford to lose 1% if that's 1% of your portfolio. That's but crazy. You might as well throw it away on high fees to an investor, to, to an average. Like this, you're taking a flyer on that. You don't know where it's going to go or what's going to happen. Well, in a way, that's right, Becky, that for the majority of people, it's 
you know, 1% is like a small risk bet. But, you know, Bitcoin makes all of its gains in 10 days in a year. I think this is an example that, you know, if you exclude the 10 best days, Bitcoin loses 25% a year. So you got to essentially hold it or hodl it, as they say, uh, to really capture the gain. Most people, it's just to put 1%. Let's, let me just play that beginning part again. Or 2%. Are you it's, saying that I get that if you're somebody who's got a lot of assets, I, I still think it's crazy. But crazy. for a retail investor, somebody who's saving for retirement and putting that aside, that seems crazy. crazy to me. Well, it's basically the idea that you know you can afford to lose. One. She says crazy three times within ten seconds, talking about putting one percent of a portfolio in Bitcoin. That's that is what's crazy. If you had put that one or two percent in you would have had a 14x. Of course, you would have had some volatility, definitely. But you you would have had a 14x in the last five years. Of course, this is old, but this changed so much. I mean, take a look at this clip. This is just from a day ago on Pompliano's, Anthony Pompliano's uh, video. And this is the head of digital assets at BlackRock. Is there a like average allocation size you're seeing from clients or a, a, a range that you're actually seeing them put out there? And, and I always joke that, you know, when people ask me, I'm like scared to say anything other than one to 5%, right? Like that, that just seems like, okay, you say that you're not crazy. Um, but I've seen, you know, many uh, large institutions talk about much higher percentages in some cases. And so like, what are you actually seeing people do? Yeah, I, th I mean, obviously it depends on investor archetype and circumstances and, and all those factors. But, you know, I could say anecdotally what we're seeing is kind of the normal range um, for those clients who are allocating, whether we're talking about in, in, you know, financial advisors on behalf of their clients or large institutions, it tends to be kind of in that one to 3% range. So times have changed. <laughs> one to 3%, this is coming from BlackRock, the largest financial institution in the world. Versus Tom Lee, who's talking about you know Bitcoin, Tesla at the time, like more high volatility assets. He's talking about institutions allocating one to three percent. Think about an institution; how big could they be? Allocating three percent, a lot of people would say that's quite aggressive. Now, I think that will change over time. I think they'll probably start allocating more. I think uh, we've heard even from a quant at BlackRock to put 28% or saying that it's not crazy to put 28% from a mathematical standpoint. Years ago, we got a paper from BlackRock saying 86% is what makes sense. And for risk tolerant investors, so 80, 86% is just what you should do. But risk tolerant investors should do 106%, like literally leverage, use margin. That's what the numbers say. So I do think there's going to be a change. And this is not Anthony Pompliano saying, hey, how much should you put towards Bitcoin? It's how much are you seeing? How much are you seeing institutions put towards Bitcoin? So it's only going to get crazier from here. I mean, keep in mind, this is not like a very fast thing. You can't go to someone that you've worked with for 50 years buying uh, different assets and say, hey, I want to put 20 of your 20 percent of your assets into this thing you've never heard of. Or maybe you've heard about it, but you thought it was poison until this week when we approved it. No, like you start buying a little bit to get excited at the performance, you buy more. It's not something where you just flip a switch and then put 20% of the portfolio in it. So starting with one to 3%, we're not talking about a quarter of a percent. We're talking about one to three. That's actually pretty significant. I bet you there are very few positions in some of these institutions portfolios that have 3%, right? There aren't a lot of them, unless you're talking about some kind of basket of assets. Now, I'm still really excited about Bitcoin. I think we have a lot higher to go, right? So I'm, I'm taking this time where we're just kind of sideways. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying just watching everything unfold. I'm enjoying seeing people change their minds on these assets. And I'm also enjoying the fact that I can buy some more Bitcoin around 70,000, around 65,000, 60,000. There are a lot of cases to be made that maybe we don't ever see 50, maybe even 60,000 again. Maybe we see 70. You know, honestly, if we go up 3x from here, 4x from here, which a lot of people think we're going to go up to that 250 to $300,000 range, in bear markets, we only fall down 75 to 80%. That would be around this price. And it would make sense because last, last bear market, we went slightly below the previous 
bull market high. So if we just put all that together, that means that if we do the same thing, we'd be slightly below the 69,000 that we hit in 2022 or 2021. But with institutions, maybe we don't get there. So we're literally talking about the same price. And you know, if we come down and we've had so much consolidation here, maybe we use this as a point, like a bottom during this next bear market. That's if we get down here. So it is crazy to think about. And of course we could go up to 150 or something like that, 140, and then we're probably gonna fall down much below this $70,000 mark. But it's just kind of crazy to think you might not ever see 70, 65,000, $60,000 Bitcoin again, especially with institutions, nation states buying. It's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy. Who am I now, right? I'm a CNBC host, I should get hired up there. But let's take a look at some other smaller cryptocurrencies that might be some high risk, high reward bets. Now these are some tokens that I'm invested into or I'm going to be, be I'm going to be invested into. Operation Phoenix is up a lot recently. Take a look some big buys here, massive buys. But they are up a lot. Just a little while ago, they were down at 0.03. This is like a week and a half ago. Now they're up 70%, so doing quite well there. They just said that they launched their OP Telegram uh, burn bot, showing the burn amount and the total supply in real time. Pretty cool, right? Uh, if you haven't already checked out Operation Phoenix, I've talked about it a lot in the past. They are a company that's trying to bring back everything that SafeMoon didn't do. By the way, if you haven't met Connor Cunney, he's here for the week. Definitely go check out his channel. Um, but Operation Phoenix is doing quite well. Also, Tencent getting ready for their IDO for Kata Katamato in five days. Uh, to celebrate, there are 14 allocations up for grabs. This is their, this is their own meme coin, which is interesting because Tencent, besides their own token, the Tencent token to get in on their launch pad. I don't think they've ever launched a cryptocurrency before. So I'm watching this. I'm probably going to be getting some of this too. I'm excited for this. And yeah, you might be able to get some as well. So definitely go follow Tencent and check this out. Reddit token, also doing really well. You can see here up to 0.008. This is something that we've talked about recently, right at that top of the range that it's been at recently. Now this is a smaller cryptocurrency about seven million dollars market cap a lot of these are smaller that we're talking about here but could do well you know this is a meme coin based on the reddit ipo so make sure you know what you're buying with all these but they are high risk very high risk very high reward let me know your thoughts though are you just buying bitcoin or are you getting in on some of these other smaller plays that maybe maybe instead of a two or three x or four x like bitcoin's gonna do are possible 10 20 50 x's let me know down below in the comment section. I really do appreciate you watching. Again, you can check out the link to Marjax and to CoinW.